Neighbor got home from work, and uh, well, this goat was just sleeping on the neighbor's porch. Uh, she's got some horses and stuff right near her house, and so I guess the goat had been hanging out with them. And anyways, we got her in a smaller paddock. Well, plenty big enough for this goat. It's a 60 foot by 80 foot paddock. Um, yeah, and right now just the one goat. Um, when we saw her running around um, without the, um, you know, outside of our fence the two nights ago, she was running around with that little gray buckling, and we haven't seen him since then. Um, but we have seen the other nanny. I'm just not sure where she's at since uh, yesterday morning. But we've got this nanny goat who we believe is pregnant. Um, we haven't had her preg checked or anything, but she's got a good sized belly. We think she's pregnant. Um, the other nanny we think is pregnant also. Uh, but yeah, she had a. The goat that's in here, um, I once I got her from the neighbor, I had her on a leash and walked her around. And you know, as long as I wasn't trying to pull her, and as long as. It was the direction that goat wanted to go. She walked on a leash with me for 20 minutes. So she's not a super wild goat, but she's not super gentle or friendly. And I think part of that is she's just going to need to get to know us. Um, but yeah, she's hiding in there right now. Let me zoom in a little bit on her. Yeah, she's a pygmy goat, brown with white legs, white ears, and a black stripe down the back. Um, and back to warm if I can. Nope, not 0.5. There we go, 1.0. Anyways, I am going to walk around and see if I can find the other one. So, so the other goat that we saw yesterday morning was inside of our pasture area that's all um, this is a gate from the pasture into this paddock and along the fence over there is my property line and that fence we've got a field fence along that line and the, the pasture that I'm inside of you know being in this paddock has our pond right over here which you can kind of see and it has all those trees right back there in it and it is completely surrounded by field fence um, now that I know there was that spot I showed in the other video where the goats had gotten under um, there was that spot and one other spot I found that I had to fix so that they couldn't get under and I did that before um, we saw the goat in here yesterday morning, so I think the other goat is somewhere in this pasture, but it's about a four, four point three to four and a half acre pasture somewhere in there, and so I and there's like I said all the trees and debris and everything else. I haven't I haven't seen the goat since yesterday morning, so she might still be in here. I'm hoping she is. Um, and if I can find her and. Um, Catcher, I want to put her in this smaller paddock with this goat so they can buddy up together and so that they're in a small area where I can keep track of them. And this is where I should have put them when I first got them, but I thought, you know, they would do okay in the larger pasture, but should have taught them where home was before um, just putting them in the big pasture. So, anyways, that's what I'm going to try to do. Um, I'm going to go ahead and go out this gate and walk around the trees.
The 60 by 80 paddock. The other side of that four foot gate there where the doghouse is is where that one goat is. Um, this one I don't have a good fend a good gate on. So it actually just opens up to the uh well, let's put this way. I don't have a gate I could keep a goat in there. I have these corral panels I can stretch across there and I could keep the horses or cows or something like that in there. But I can't keep, I can't keep a goat in there. But the the one paddock with that four foot gate, I can definitely keep the goat in. Um, but let's see. Then right here, I guess it's possible under this gate that the goat could have gotten out and gone. I'm just noticing this here. The gate is kind of elevated there. I probably need to bring a shovel out here and throw some dirt under there. And it did rain all night. So I'm trying to see if I see any hoof prints from the goat over here. And I don't know. Because, I mean, right here... But that looks more like the sheep, because the sheep were moving in and out of here, and that looks too big to be the goat. So you can see right here, sorry, right here and right here, that looks more like the sheep than the, than the goat. Um... And the sheep sometimes would rub their, um, I don't know that that would do anything or not. But anyways, the sheep would sometimes rub on this gate. There's a bit of wool on it. And I don't think that they're, that's, I mean, you see that 2 by 4 and how much space. Like, my phone won't even totally fit between the 2 by 4 and that. And so there was only maybe 5 inches under that gate. I don't think the goat could have gotten out there. But I'll need to put a couple shovelfuls of dirt there, I think. The rest of this fence, uh, this goes all the way down to the ground level. Anyway, so the reason I bring up that gate, this paddock right here, um, Yeah, this one is 80 wide by about um, 200 long, but on the front of it, it's got uh, six strand barbed wire. It's got a barbed wire low enough to the ground. My sheep have never been able to get out of that barbed wire fence, but my sheep are um, Dorper and St. Croix. They're bigger than these goats are, and they've never gone out of that barbed wire fence, but... Uh, that doesn't mean the goat couldn't get through there if it did get into that paddock. So I had that gate closed to keep the goats out of that paddock. Um, but the rest of this fence, like I've walked it a few times and haven't seen anywhere, you know, other than the two spots that I fixed um, over the last couple of days, where the goat could get out. I know, obviously, there was the one spot they definitely got out. And one other spot I found where they could have gotten out. But I fixed those before we saw the goat in this paddock yesterday morning. Um, I think I've had to do more work for these free goats than they were probably worth. But whatever. Um, so this spot, I don't know why, but the horses, when they were in the pond area, have leaned on the fence here so much that they've bent them top wire down. This was also the spot that when we had that twister come through that destroyed our trampoline, which I haven't cleaned up yet, that's where the the wind blew that trampoline over the fence and knocked the fence over, you know, pushed the fence over and I had to straighten it up. So it was a bit of a weak spot in the fence and then the horses have been leaning on it. But that's the top part of the fence, not the bottom. And I don't think these pygmy goats would jump this fence. Never seen them try to jump anything. Um, 
uh, the place we got them from, they had three foot high fences for the pygmy goats and there were spots where the fences were pushed down some and they were jumping that, but where it was pushed down, it was only about two feet tall and they were jumping that, but I haven't, I don't know. I don't know if a pygmy goat could jump a four foot fence. But anyways, so we have rabbits out here. Um, cottontails. Last night, I was walking around with the uh, one of my work lights, and uh, I saw seven different cottontail rabbits running around this field. And there's spots like here where the rabbits dig under. Um, again, this spot's only maybe four inches high. Um, I end up having a piece of two by four everywhere there's a spot they can get under. Um, that was not planned, by the way. I don't have a shovel, but pick up some of this dirt and weeds and kick it under. I don't know why the rabbits are digging because they could go right through the fence. But there was that spot there that the rabbits had dug, and there's another spot just down this way a little bit. where the rabbits dug a deep hole right here. And this spot I fixed before we ever got the goats, or I caved it in, kicked the dirt back in that the rabbits had dug out and pushed it down in there. Sorry. But this was right under the fence line, and that hole, it's like they were digging a burrow right under the fence line. And I kicked the dirt back in and uh, stomped it down in there before we let the goats out here, before we got the goats. Um, yeah. Definitely. Yeah. I mean, this pasture we've had, we had our horses and sheep in here for three weeks, almost three weeks, two and a half weeks before we got the goats. Um, and then the horses were locked out of here for about uh, four days before we put the goats in. Uh, so, you know, I'm trying to rotate the animals so that uh, I don't ever want to leave any of my animals in a paddock for more than uh, more than three weeks, because from what I've Learn the pasture rotation is three weeks is the maximum um, for the parasite cycle. If you can move them more often than three weeks, then uh, you'll break the parasite cycle on the animals. But you know, that's so. The reason I say about is my this is the only pasture I have that would be capable of housing the goats. But the other thing I've researched and found out from neighbors that keep goats is that uh, once the goats learn where home is, um, they will always come back. You can let them out and they'll come back. Okay, so here is a low spot in the fence and there is a little bit of a gap under the fence all the way along. And then right here is how my dog got in the other day. She dug under the fence here. Now I threw some wood under there and she hasn't tried to push under it since but I'm in a another spot where I need to bring a shovel and and throw some dirt under it but this wood hadn't been moved at all um, and the so the goat I don't think the goats tried to get out here at all and I didn't see any tracks around it basically all this to say I think they still have one more goat in this pasture that I just am having trouble finding on a regular basis. I don't know where she's holed up, where she's hiding, but there are a ton of places to hide in here. But, uh, I mean, just look at the trees like this. She could be under any one of them or in any one of these clumps of trees. And this is one of the reasons I wanted to get goats is to have them hopefully clean up some of these shrubby trees because I know goats will eat a lot more stuff. So, okay, here's another spot. 
this spot I fixed um, a couple years ago. So I've got a, uh, a bend in my fence here, uh, cedar post, and a diagonal brace on that post. And then this brace goes into the, into the ground, and I've got large rock buried underground at the end of that post. And then it was fine all along here until we had a stray dog dig under here when I first got sheep and got in and killed one of my sheep that, you know, this was a year and a half ago. And I filled this spot full of rock and haven't ever had anything try to dig there again. That's not where the goats got out. They got out down this way a little further. Um, <clears throat> Yes, yeah, so when we were given the, the free goats, we got three of them. Um, two nannies and a buckling. Um, the buckling was hanging out with that nanny that I showed in the beginning of the video um, when they first got out. We saw them. So we, we, we got them home on, a, on Tuesday night. Um, and then Wednesday, they were all th Wednesday morning, they were all three. All three of the goats were right over, sorry, right over in this area, but then my dog started chasing them. And 20 minutes after the dog, after I got the dog locked up, I came out to look and two of the goats were gone. Not all three of them were gone, but anyways, that night, Wednesday night, I found um, the two goats, the brown nanny that I showed you and the little buckling, and they were outside of the paddock. You see the trees? back here they were past that to the next little set of trees back in there and they were basically on my fence line on my north fence line uh, so a ways away from where they should have been and then they, when I saw them they took off and ran another half a mile back into my neighbor's pasture um, to where his pond is and that is the last time I've seen that little Billy um, haven't seen him since then um, but yeah, obviously the uh, brown nanny had come back to my neighbor's property, my neighbor just to the south, and uh, oh, huh. is that fence loose right there? That's loose enough that the little, I don't know. I'm just noticing marks of something trying to get under the fence here. That looks too small for the goats to get under. That something has pulled away at it and that's more recent than that over there so the thing is debris collects against this fence because it is the lowest spot of this pasture this is where the water runs out of the pasture when a, a heavy rain and uh, so we end up with a lot of these sticks and debris and leaves and stuff that something was pulling at that but that looked more like that didn't look like a goat. That looked more like uh, a raccoon or a possum or something like that pulling at it. Okay, so that, that's about under the fence this way. You know, there's a couple inch gap here, but I can barely stick my toe under it. Uh, and this fence is tight here. This is my property line fence on the south side. Walking along here. Okay, so right here, the fence floats up a little bit, mainly because I got a hill that it's got to go up over, and I've got this oil-filled pipe here. And so I've stuck debris and, you know, cedar trees I'd cut down when I built the fence. I stuck them under here, and I put tires under it here. The only thing was this tire, this was the other spot I thought maybe they could have gotten in and out before yesterday when I realized it, and I put this... Uh, a piece of log there but they were there was that tire didn't the dirt had washed out of it that i had thrown in there and so it was a, a void in the uh you know under under the tire there while i don't think either of the nannies could have gotten out there the buckling definitely could have and then along here right these tires are filling in the gap and they're up to basically the bottom of the fence and then right here, a couple uh, 
logs or small logs, whatever, leaning up against the bottom of the fence. And uh, that fence is actually stapled to those, has been since I built the fence. And they've been there so long that debris and dirt have washed up against them and are pinning them up to the fence. And yes, I used the cedar tree as a fence post here. It was a good anchor post along this uh, fence where I had the hill. And the tires hanging on the post here to keep them down into the ground. I put extra tall fence posts. Um, I think these are seven foot posts and they're down into the ground more than um, what was needed. But, and then I hung weight on them to, to keep them, keep the fence down. But I found out a few, well, a week or so ago that this pipe is not in use and should be empty. So, um, Basically, they're saying I could just cut it out and not have it holding my fence up there. If I cut it here and cut it on the other side and drag that piece under, I can um, let the fence all the way down to the tires instead of being held up like that. So that's going to be another thing on the list to do. Um, so speaking of places the goat could hide, there's a large um, concrete and stone used to be part of a foundation of some sort way back when just tipped into the ravine right there and there's a bit of a burrow underneath it but that's more like a burrow for a rodent or a rat you know not a rat i haven't seen one but rodents or uh um what is it? rabbits that's what i was trying to say something like that under there but then there's a little bit of uh I don't know if you could see it, a little white speck right there, and to the neck, to the left of it, there's some sort of metal box. There's so that's another area that maybe goats could hide under this debris right here. There seems to be a little burrow. Maybe goats could hide in there. You know, so but again, I well, I'm gonna walk around that and just see if she's in there. Because that one actually looks big enough that she could hide in there. Alright, I'm rambling a bunch. Let's see. I do not see anything in there, but that does look like a... A little natural debris hut where she could have hidden. It looks like something has bedded down under there a few times. Don't know if that was the goat or not. But yeah, you can see that garbage over there. Uh, I'm not sure what that metal box was. Almost looks like maybe an old time ice box or whatever. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Um, anyways, this box right here. So I had seen that brown nanny goat yesterday morning right over here behind my neighbor's fence basically right in this area and she was trying to find a spot to get under the fence to get in and so I brought this box over here thinking that maybe she could um, hop on it and jump over but I think I'm gonna pull this back onto my side of the fence now just a minute I'm gonna pause it